on Hulu, I was quite excited to see The Blob from 1988 added to their streaming movie lineup. This is a movie I've been wanting to see for some time. I've heard people mention it in Hearsay, talking about the effects and how it was a good remake. And I gotta tell you, this doesn't disappoint. So, from 1988, which you need to know, I guess it's written or co-written by Frank Darabont, director of The Green Mile, Shawshank Redemption, the guy behind turning The Walking Dead into a series for the best season it actually had, the first season. And it's directed by Chuck Russell, who made, I think it was Nightmare on Elm Street 3, which Frank Derenbach uh, also worked as a writer. And Chuck Russell also did Eraser with Ronald Schwarzenegger. So, uh, this movie looks pretty damn good. I mean, this, this is a tri-star release. I think it was made uh, under $10 million. But the, a lot of that money, you can tell, really went to the practical effects. There's good, good use of just about everything uh, available to them at, in the day. So, uh, it's a quite a different story also. We start out, we've got uh, th this guy playing football. He wants to ask out like the head cheerleader, Shawnee Smith, who you may remember from the, uh, Saw films, but I like to think of her as being from Becker. Anyways, uh, I don't remember her character's name, I'm just gonna call her Shawnee. And the football playing dude, I'm just gonna call him football. So, uh, he wants to ask her out. They're gonna go on a date. There's also a guy in town, this troublemaker, Kevin Dillon, who I'm just gonna call Kevin Dillon. He has a motorcycle, he tries to make this jump across a bridge, spins out this homeless guy who collects cans, sees this, kinda has a laugh, and heads off in the woods. Well, anyways, uh, this guy's got, the football's gonna go on a date with Shawnee Smith, but his buddy wants to go buy condoms first and kind of frames football because this uh, preacher comes by. He's like, oh, hey, it's not for me, it's for this horn dog over here. So it makes this guy kind of look like a douche. Uh, both of them, you know, to either us or the characters in the zeitgeist there. But uh, well, I should have said in the narrative. But uh, anyways, they're, they're going to go on their little date. He goes to their house. Shawnee Smith's younger brother and his pal are going to go see a scary movie. And they're not supposed to, but they sneak out to a movie, I think. Anyways, uh, they're, they're driving on the road. And uh, this, this guy, the can man, he sees this meteor crash. And he goes to it and, you know... He's like poking at this thing with a stick or whatever, and the blob climbs up on him. It looks a lot like the 50s movie. And you're thinking, this seems a lot like the 50s movie so far. The Blob with Steve McQueen. Was it 50s? I think it was 58. Could be mistaken. So, he's in great pain from the Blob. And then he goes running down the road. Uh, well, he, he tries to cut his arm off, with his hand off with an axe in front of Kevin Dillon. And that freaks Kevin Dillon out. Because, like, that's a weird jump scare, isn't it? Ah! They go running into the road, come across football and Shawnee Smith. Uh, old guy b bounces into his car and he's like, hey, there's a car accident. You're coming with me, Kevin Dillon. I'm like, really? Car, car accident? You need witnesses and shit? Like, what? The guy didn't even really leave a ding or anything. So they go to the hospital. You can probably see stuff coming down my nose. Kevin Dillon's like, oh man, you're gonna be all right, I'm out of here. The guy goes to hospital bed, football takes a look at him and sees him kind of convulsing and stuff. Walks over there, lifts up the, the blanket and sees that his body's missing. And it's like, whoa, holy shit, what's this? And he's like freaking out and stuff. And he gets on the phone and then this acid starts dropping, dripping from the ceiling. And it's the blob, it got up on the ceiling, it's larger and it drops down on him. Shawnee Smith comes running to football uh, to help him, and he's like engulfed in the in the blob. It's a really cool effect that they wouldn't even bother with today. They just do CGI. And he reaches his hand out, and she tries to grab his arm, and she's tugging at him, and his arm gets ripped off. She then falls on the ground, hits her head against the wall. Cut to police have shown up. This gruesome stuff's going on. We don't know who's all behind it, but we're gonna find a way to blame Kevin Dillon for it. And then they uh, 
they arrest Kevin Dillon. Shawnee Smith's telling them what happened, but nobody believes her. There's the lady who works at a diner. She's gonna have a little date at 11 o'clock with the uh, police guy. Well, Kevin Dillon gets released from prison because they're like, well, we can't really charge him with anything. So, uh, he, he goes to the diner, gets a sandwich, and then at that point, it's like, okay, place is closing up, but the blob has gotten into the water system. It kills, like, the sous chef, and then, uh, starts, uh, scaring everybody. They run into the freezer. They kind of learn that the thing doesn't want to go near, near the cold, and, uh, guys, I'm not kidding you. It's, it's too goddamn hot. I, I've got some, I've got some Gatorade. I'm gonna grab a Gatorade, okay? And I'm probably gonna goddamn walk the rest of this. I, I'm sorry, this is the first time I have to do this. I'm getting old. I'm not getting enough money from you guys. I can't make my next student payment, student loan payment. I, I need 150 bucks in a couple days. I'm gonna sell off my old video games, try to make do, and, I, and that's if I even live. Is this feeling pretty miserable right here? All right, so I'm gonna grab me a drink of water here. Yep. Ah, oh, shit. <sighs> Didn't want to have to do it like that, man. Didn't want to have to do it like that. Sorry, I let you guys down. So, yeah, I think it's 100 degrees out here. The, the lady at the diner goes uh, to a payphone booth. She wants to call the cops. Oh, but the sheriff, he's, he's on his way. And then the blob attacks her. It's pushing up against the glass at the, in the, at the payphone booth. Phone booth. And uh, she sees the cop's badge in there. He's in the mix. He, got, he must have got taken out by the blob off camera. The thing pushes in on the windows and crushes through them and grabs her, you know, takes her in too. So our our heroes are established as Kevin Dillon and Shawnee Smith. The uh, the preacher guy from earlier, we see him and he sees the blob uh, slink away down into the sewer. He's like, my God, what is this stuff? He goes into the restaurant and he collects some trails left behind. Uh, it left some pieces when it tried to go into the freezer puts the stuff into a jar. Not that this is really that necessary, but it's for a sequel bait ending that really wasn't that needed. This movie didn't really make money. It cost like twice as much as it made. It was considered a big a big bomb. And it really should have been because it was actually a pretty admirable effort. And there were some twists here I'll be getting to. The kids get away. They, they head out into the woods. I don't remember how they got out there. Maybe rode a motorcycle. And kids, I mean Kevin Dillon and Shawnee Smith, it's hard to call them kids. But shit, you gotta know I'm older than they were when they made this movie, right? So, they're out in the woods and then government dudes show up with the white suits on from E.T. and shit. They're like, hey, I'm Dr. Whatever, I'm a black guy, you can trust me. And uh, we're here to, to help you guys, you might have a virus. You know, we're, we got a quarantine procedure, all this stuff. They just follow the rules. They're like, okay, sure. So they go into a van, and then Kevin Dillon's like, screw this van shit, I'm jumping out. So he jumps out of the van. Shawnee Smith's like, well, I don't want to jump out. So she stays in the van, and they head back down to the town center there. She meets up with her family, but oh no, the little brother, he's at the movie theater. They're going sector by sector, and they haven't gotten to the movie theater yet, which might be the most populated area in a small town. So these kids are watching this slasher movie, which actually looks like an authentic slasher movie in many ways. The dialogue, the, the girl making out the guy, hey, let's give him something to look at. And then the guy's like a hockey mask and gardening tools. It seems kind of legit, actually. So this happens, and uh, the blob ends up at the movie theater, goes in through the air conditioning vent, attacks the projectionist, attacks another dude, there's a guy heckling uh, little brother and, and uh, punk friend. Punk friend is kind of a bad dude because he's like, I want to see the, the movie with the naked chicks and, and I'm, I'm kind of a bad guy. I keep my feet on the seat in front of me. So you know he's going to get his comeuppance, right? Oh, also at some point, 
out in the woods, uh, the jerk off that bought the condoms and framed football for, for wanting them. He's making out with a chick and he's got her like passed out and he's gonna Bill Cosby this. Reaches over, grabs some boob. It's uh, Erica El El Elinaki. She was the original babe of Baywatch. And she was in E.T. You know, I mentioned E.T. here. She, she kissed Elliot in E.T. Anyways, she, she uh, I guess the blob got to some part of her because like he reaches for her and then tentacles get on him. And then her face like collapses like it was from Body Snatchers, which I reviewed the last week. And I'm thinking, well, that's a little weird. Like, I, the blob has some unusual characteristics for killing people here. But something that I like is, yes, it is a gooey blob still. Sure, it may have an acid quality, but you can tell when someone's dead. Like, unlike today's movies where it's like, oh, that explosion, I thought it killed you. No, not really. I'm still here. I, I'm, I'm in a Marvel movie. I can't die, remember? You know, that kind of stuff. So instead of that kind of thing happening, you can really tell when someone dies here. Well, the blob uh, it kills this guy that was bugging the kids at the movie theater. People in the movie theater are running around. They're getting sucked in by the blob and shit. Shawnee Smith shows up. Uh, I don't think Kevin Dillon's with them or not. I, she, she goes into the sewer with the kids. They, they run out of the building. And they head into the sewer. And uh, they... Are, are sledding through the water and I guess the blob can get in the water just like any normal creature but it doesn't really take absorb the water and it attacks the uh, the punk kid he gets he gets pulled back well Shawnee Smith she's you know meek cheerleader she passed out earlier she's doing as people tell her to do and now she's really starting to man up her brother's like go rescue my friend they're climbing this ladder she jumps off dives in the water looks for him can't find him and then finds his body being like melted away. Ah, help! And, yep, it's too late for you. Like I said, you can tell when someone's dead in this. So the blob's gonna come up after her and stuff. And uh, the kid gets away in the grate. She can't climb through. But then, uh, shit, something happens. I think maybe there was an explosion that got its attention and it started going towards it. The scientist guys are on the scene. And Kevin Dillon's like, Kevin Dillon overheard some stuff in the woods about this shit. He, he saw the meteor. And here's the big plot twist. It's not a meteor, it's a satellite. American satellite. They're, they're getting stuff ready for their bioweapons division, right? NASA. Doing a little aliens. And so, uh... Yeah, that's a thing. Your big plot twist. Black, trustworthy looking scientist dude is actually the bad guy. And it, so he wants this to keep, stay covered up. The people in the town are expendable. Kevin Dillon overhears this, they chase him. He goes in through the woods, all this stuff. Gets away uh, on a, he, he gets his motorcycle to actually do this jump. So so that Chekhov's gun, you know, that checked off that box, Chekhov's gun, whatever the hell. I'm, I'm having a heat stroke. So, then, uh, I guess he found, he found his way into the sewer, and, uh, that's, and that's where he, likes, he got the attention of the blob. Eventually, he gets Shawnee Smith to ride on the back of his motorcycle. They, they head around in the sewer, do a little stunt, drive up a tunnel type thing, you know, like in... Arkham Knight, when you have to do that type of shit in the Batmobile, you know what I'm saying? When Joker the uh, challenge see in the DLC, right? You know what I mean? So they do a barrel roll, and they're, they're getting away. And uh, then they, uh, they, they come across some government people down there. They're getting killed off. One of them has a bazooka. They fire the bazooka up at this uh, manhole that was covered up by a truck. Blows a truck up, great actual explosion. How do I know? Because it's not CGI. How do I know it's not CGI? Because it's in 1988. It's the only way to be sure, you know? It's like what Ripley said. So, 
this shit goes down. They climb up. He's like, hey, you can't trust these government guys. And the government guy's like, this is just some kid. He's infected. You guys gotta believe me, I'm a doctor. That means I can be trusted. And he's like, Kevin Dillon has some good argument here. He's like, what would these scientists be doing here so quick? They're behind this creature. They, they made it. It's not just some meteor. They don't show up for every damn meteor like this. And then the townspeople are like, like you know what, you're right, man. The, sher the sheriff's deputy that was given uh, Kevin Dillon a hard time, you may think he looks familiar. He was the guy who basically got turned into the Toxic Avenger in Robocop. And then Clarence Boddicker ran him over in the car and he went squish on the windshield all nasty. That was this dude. So they're having a fight here with the, the government guys. The blob kills the, the worst one, the, the black dude. That sounds really racist when I say it like that. I don't give a shit. So then the white guy that was kind of like, hey, that was my man down there. We can't seal these kids in. You know, he's a little sympathetic. He's like, let's blow this shit up. So they just start dropping like C4 and shit all the, oh man, this nice cool breeze. Shit. You know, I'm gonna goddamn take the goddamn hoodie off. Got a haircut today. It was under $10. I said, here's a 20, because that's what my mom gave me. God damn, my life's pathetic. I said, keep the change up to 10 bucks. Oh well, I think it worked out okay. It, it, wor it looked a little better if it went for the, the hoodie. Shit, I'm... How bad does this look? I can tell from the shadow. Yeah, my hair all sticking up weird. So, this guy gets killed off too by the blob. Then we have all the people that are remaining all, all run inside this church and they're, they're gonna fight the blob there. Uh, chief sheriff deputy gets sucked into this door, blob grabs him and shit, like snaps him in half. God damn, the effects look pretty damn convincing. The only time this thing's kind of look bad is when they do some composite shots. And you can tell they have like a miniature blob and it's like attacking people. Kind of like 50s monster movie style. They're running down the street. Oh, SWAT at them sort of shit. Yeah, that's a little telling when, it, when it's trying to play that card. But um, overall, man, these are really quite impressive effects. Everybody who gets killed kind of dies in a different way. It's like they actually came up with a lot of creative ways to kill people with a goddamn blob. So they're gonna fight this thing off. Uh, Kevin Dillon and Shawnee Smith go out outside where there is an ice cream, uh, well not an ice cream, a snow making truck that Kevin Dillon, he works in this uh, mechanic shop where they're fixing this thing. He knew where it was, he, he grabbed it, he gets it over to the building and whatever. And he's like, okay, so it's Fray the Cold. We're gonna make it snow, bitch. So he gets turned over in the truck and, and things aren't going so well. Shawnee Smith tries to come to the rescue, gets the machine gun, starts shooting the thing up. It's like, die, you son of a bitch, you know? All that sassy heroin stuff, man. She tries to leap away, gets kind of stuck. Kevin Dillon got out of the truck, uh, helped her out. There's an explosion. That was timed or something happened. Blows up the truck. And it starts snowing and the the blob has basically been crystallized. And everybody's out celebrating its snow and it looks beautiful. The two, Kevin Dillon and Shawnee Smith, now hug. Now they'd said earlier in the movie, oh hey, you never talked to me in school, all this stuff, you know, I'm not one for school, I'm a bad boy. They don't kiss at the end, they hug, they hug. They're not jumping too far into this. You know, she was on a date with a guy she liked that day, she died. Let's not move so fast. So, they're like, okay, we gotta shovel this guy up, this blob, get it out of here before it thaws. Cut to sometime in the future. Now the movie looks really different. This is like a totally different camera and stock of film. It looks like, it's, it looks like they actually shot this like a year later or something. We have this preacher guy from earlier. He's talking about the apocalypse, all this stuff. He's got some gullible people in this tent that he's preaching to. And he's like, God's gonna give me the answer one day for when all of this is gonna turn south. And then he picks up the jar and it's got the blob slushing around in it. And it's like sequel bait ending that never got made. You know, that was the way they did sequel bait endings back in the day. Now they would've put that after the credits. The credits play this like rock song by this Swedish band, Alien. 
it's a brave new love and it's like hey this is some kind of jamming shit never really heard of this band i, I looked them up that's how i knew their name was alien this, i mean it's got that kind of like generic 80s hair metal sound but you know in a in the way that you like having it at the end of your kick-ass finale right it's a pretty serviceable movie man like i'm telling you, the effects are all right the acting's pretty decent you know it's got to be when the when the leads are people who are actually in shit later in life as adults, right? You know, um, say I gotta give, uh, The Blob from 1988 three out of four stars. And, uh, I think I'm gonna go to the hospital. <laughs>